Good evening, everyone. Um, I would like to call to order this Centerville Board of Education meeting for Monday, November 22nd, 2021. Uh, I'm going to hold the microphone closer than I have in the past few months up to my mouth so that hopefully everybody can hear me better. Um, I hope that my nasally uh, full voice doesn't drive you too crazy here for the next 45 minutes. So, uh, item number two, uh, Ms. Solver, call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Here. Mrs. Dernbaugh. Here. Dr. Rohr. Here. Megan Spark. Here. Mr. Schroyer. Here. Uh, item number three, the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Item number four on the agenda. Could I have a motion, please, to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Megan Spark? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Uh, item number five on the agenda tonight is honors. This is for Few Yahoo Glass of America. I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Schroyer. Um, we're very pleased and honored to have representatives from the Fuya Glass of America company. And I'd like to invite them, along with Sheree Palopi, up to the podium. If they would come up here, please. And uh, Sheree is going to make the introductions. And um, another one of our staff members, uh, Megan Lamaster, is going to jo join us as well at the podium. So we're excited that they're here today and uh, helping us uh, make a, a great dream come true that we've been working on for a while. Sheree. We're always working on ways to enhance and change and develop our engagement with families. And as we look at the last 18 months and some of the families that we're having more trouble reaching, the idea came to, to us to work on a learning station that could go into the community and take the learning into neighborhoods and places. And so um, we have partnered with Fuyao. Um, we pitched the idea to them, and um, they have graciously decided to fund our mobile learning lab. And so we actually will hopefully have our learning lab um, in the district in the next few weeks so that we'll begin customizing the inside for the launch to happen once the weather breaks in the spring. And so today we have Mr. Shi. He is the president of Studio Glass America. He is also the chairman of the Heron Foundation as well as a Centerville parent. And Lei Shi, and she's the community relations director for Studio Glass America. Thank you. 
涉及所有的老呃涉及的成员。The first and very uh, the very first one is carry the most important uh, responsibility for all the uh, members in the community. Because they trust us to lend us all the, the land for us to build a company. Enough to tax for the government, local government. So our government can do the um, the community services for every uh, equally for every uh, community group. And the third one is to protect the environment uh, around the company. And we also would like to, um, as same as Central Central City Schools, we would like to build Fuyao as a learning organization for all the employees so that they can learn continually the new knowledge. Thank you very much. And like Cherie said, uh, this will provide a great opportunity for us to reach in, out and reach into our community and do a lot of great things for kids. So we're excited about this. So again, we'd like to thank them for being here tonight. Item number six on the agenda is hearing of the public. The Board of Education provides this as a convenient opportunity for public comment before any official action is taken. Uh, if you would like to address the board, please come to the microphone, state your name and address. Please limit your comments to no more than three minutes as the board does have uh, other uh, action items on the agenda. Of course, we will listen to all who speak but generally not engage in discussion or dialogue at this time. Matters requiring follow-up will be directed to the superintendent. As always, individual board members can be contacted for a set meeting appointment, and written correspondence can be mailed to the board office. President Schreier, shall I take time? Yes, please. Go ahead, Mike. Good evening, Mike. Mike, I'm I'd like to ask the school board to review their school district COVID transmission education program. I'd like to ask you to look over the last 100 days and assess if it's been effective. I hope to find a look at the metrics, determine if the policies are working as you intended. If you're not doing that, I encourage you to consider that. You should look at the impact to the students and state, not only within the local area, but what are the trends nationally? I think you need to look at the COVID protocols in, in, a, in a most holistic manner. What I would encourage you to look at is whether the cure is worse than the disease. If you look at the secondary impact of student health and learning from lockdowns, masks, temperature checks, contract tracing, and constant testing, I'm concerned that you're creating an epidemic of anxiety, depression, and fear in our children. For example, the CDC reported a 31% increase in mental health related emergency room visits for children aged 12 to 17 last year alone. Additionally, the CDC has reported a higher rate of suicide for young people since the start of COVID. In reality, our efforts to protect children from the virus may be harming them more than we realize. There are also impacts on students and teachers' support of public schools. Since March of 2020, the homeschool population has increased fourfold in the United States. Prior to COVID, 3.3% of American students were homeschooled. By the fall of last year, they had risen to 11.1%. The impact is just as hard on teachers as well. A recent education research center surveyed teachers found that 54% of current teachers indicate they are somewhat or very likely to leave their position in the next two years. 
the stress of implementing COVID mitigation policies was a major, was a major factor indicated in those studies. I would encourage you to look at subjective data when reviewing the effect of the school COVID mitigation policy. In the last 107 days, several schools have reported 452 positive cases of COVID. How does that compare with other school districts of similar size? How does that compare to school districts that did not require masks? Is there a significant difference? I would also recommend you look at the county public health information data. As a local, the last two years has shown us that threat to COVID among our student population warrants the mitigation efforts we have implemented. This will get, give you a good picture of the impact to the local population. I also ask you to look at the impact of shutdown masks and social distancing and quarantine are having on our students' long-term development. I would encourage you to look at many factors as you review our school district's COVID mitigation policy. Seek parental inputs through a survey. Seek teacher impacts through an anonymous survey as well. Seek impacts from parents who are on both sides of the issue. Look at second order effects such as mental health, student learning habits, and cognitive impacts of development from policies such as masks and quarantines. Look at the impact among different populations such as special needs children, younger kids, kids who are non-English learners. I want to encourage you to provide a transparent process so students and parents and staff can see how you came up with the final recommendations. Finally, I would provide a concrete metric that will use to determine more of the COVID uh, community can expect to see less of the mitigation in place. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board? Enjoyed the Senate Bill Plan competition. Sir, Did could you uh, give us your name oh, and sorry. address, please? My name is Scott Taylor, and I live at 10110 Linesburg, Springboro Road, Linesburg, Ohio, 45342. I want to let you know I really enjoyed the Senate Bill Band competition, and since Senate Bill was performing an exposition, Linesburg was able to take home several trophies. Observations from last, last time I came here. Last time I addressed this board, I told you that based on my research, that masking students is ineffective, it interferes with breathing, denies them the ability to see their teachers' faces, and creates fear. I provided my research showing that, in essence, masking students is abusive, how do not listen to me and other concerned parents? Instead of making decisions for the welfare of students, the board followed guidelines outlined the requirements for receiving ESSER funds. It's disappointing that this board refused to stand up for the welfare of the students of Centerville and show true leadership. Was it simply easier for you to do as you were instructed and collect the $7 million of ESR funding for the school? Within the guidelines of ESR funds, I found the statement, the plan must contain, at a minimum, the extent to which how the funds will be used in implementing prevention mitigation strategies that are instead practical, consistent with CDC guidelines. And the CDC guidelines states, a universal indoor masking for all students, staff, teachers, and visitors, and K-12 students, regardless of vaccine status. Another quote, interventions of the will respond to the social, emotional, mental health, and academic needs of students. Oh, that states requirements of social, emotional learning. A seemingly innocent and worthy teaching has a dark side in teaching the concept of restorative justice, guiding our kids how to feel and the concept of equity, and as a partner in indoctrinating kids in a political and true agenda. So let's mask the kids so that they cannot breathe, cannot see the faces of their teachers, and indoctrinate them into a Marxist methodology and tell them how they must feel. You know, this board administration is selling out the students of Centerville under the guise of protection. The board has failed its obligation to uphold their oath and uphold the Constitution, and secondly, to protect and not abuse the students of Centerville. As a result of your violations, the unalienable rights of the students of Centerville, including violations of the United States Constitution, Ohio Constitution, Ohio Revised Code, and Section 7 of the Civil Rights Law, I am serving you an affidavit of truth, calling you to account for your illegal actions. Thank you. I'm sorry, I just have a question real fast. You said you live in Miamisburg. Do you actually have a student in our district? I do not. Thank you.
I filed this on behalf of other students. But you do not have a student. You're not a parent. No, I don't. I have no injury, but injuries are occurring others. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, sir. I am Bob Wellbaum. I live at 941 Silver Creek Drive in Washington Township. This is a month late, but for what it's worth, I was uh, over in England in early October, and I needed four COVID tests to complete a 12-day visit. Over there, masks are mandatory for everybody indoors, except the uh, enforcement is for other spot. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the board this evening? Okay, seeing no one, we're going to go to uh, item number seven on the agenda, which are the board and administrative reports, and I will, as usual, turn this over to Dr. Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Shorier. I think first on tonight, we've got maybe a report from our uh, student board reps. Is that correct? No, we've had some family emergencies, so we're going to wait till next that's the board report. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Uh, next will be the legislative update. So, Ms. Swartz. The State Board of Educated voted to elect Charlotte McGuire as president because there's no Charlotte McGuire's from our area, so it's kind of exciting. The House passed Senate Bill 229. I discussed this bill last month at our meeting, so we should be familiar with that. And then the House passed House Bill 99. The bill would expressively state that it, it that its intent is to overrule the decision of the Ohio Supreme Court in Gabbard versus Madison Local School District Board of Education. The bill also would require a school district to provide public notification if the school district authorized one or more persons to go armed within a school. Additionally, the bill would establish requirements for a person authorized to go armed within a school safety zone and establish training requirements. This bill will allow districts to require additional training if they choose. So now House Bill 99 heads for the Senate. I will keep you updated on this one. Oh, sorry, that's the end of the report. Thank you, Ms. Sparks. Uh, next on, uh, as far as our reports go, would be a report from our treasurer, Mrs. Solomon. Thank you. Uh, I have a short uh, report for you tonight at your uh, tables. I put the monthly rolling report, which is part of item 8A that will be, uh, that I'll be asking for your approval here in a minute. Um, we, we are going to start talking about this each month, um, probably mostly at the work session, but I did want to bring it here to the regular meeting um, and just mention that uh, Mrs. Swan and I did uh, a recent video and posted that online. These are posted on our website as well. Um, this particular report is one that I look at on a month-to-month -month basis to make sure that everything is on track with our finances for the year. And if something gets out of whack or off track, I'm gonna bring that to you each month to talk about. And so um, for the month of October, uh, the way the report reads, it looks like we were under estimate on our revenue by almost $4 million. That is a timing issue, and I mentioned that when we talked about that last month. Sometimes payments just don't come when I think they're gonna come. And so if you, if you look down the report just a little bit further and you get to the section called rollback, the rollback reimbursement that we received from the state normally comes in the month of October. We received it in November. And so that will catch itself up next month. And again, that's just a timing issue. Um, and then on the expense side of things, we're, we're just right on track with everything each month. Um, we're about 170000 under um, our plan estimate for about $200,000 under the plan for the year so far. And so that is our monthly rolling report. Um, again, we'll, we'll talk about these usually more at the work session, but I wanted to uh, bring it to the regular meeting for this week. Uh, the other item uh, on the agenda that you don't see very often is the approval of the five-year forecast. Um, but these are the same numbers that we looked at back in September. And that's, but that's why, again, we didn't get into a long discussion at our work session last week because it's, it's the same information. We still don't have an update on state funding. Um, I'm, I'm still hopeful in December that we'll have that information. Um, but same numbers, we just have to have the board actually approve those numbers in ODE's format for us to be compliant with audit and to submit to the uh, 
um, Ohio Department of Education. This also will be on the treasurer's webpage, um, and it will be loaded into the ODE system as well. Thank you. Uh, the, the next report really is something that I was going to cover, and it's something that I mentioned at the work session uh, a week ago. Uh, there were some questions about uh, you know, what the COVID-19 uh, numbers look like in Montgomery County. So I've provided as receipts uh, the most recent COVID-19 school report prepared by Public Health. So um, I will be getting another one that will be updated this week. It, it usually arrives um, on Wednesday. The holiday, I'm not sure if it'll come on Thursday, but as soon as I get that, I will, I will email that out to all of you as well. But last week we did discuss health and safety protocols, and I wanted just to share where I think we are with the community. You know, it's true that the case rates appear to be declining overall, although some of the daily rates have gone up and down across the state, our county, and our primary zip codes. Um, so last just last week we had 13 positive cases, the week before that we did. With the vaccine now available for younger children, we are reviewing our guidelines to see where we can start making some adjustments. The plan that we communicated earlier this year was that our mask requirement would be lifted six weeks after vaccines became available for five to 11 year olds. At this timeline could take us up to winter break. Our goal is to make masks recommended and not required for all grade levels uh, following winter break, if, if that works. However, we are continuing to look at factors before we make a final decision. We will continue to watch the trends in our county zip codes and schools following Thanksgiving break. We will review our contact tracing and quarantine procedures to determine how they would be impacted by a change in the mask requirement. And we want to make sure that any decisions we make will negatively affect our ability to keep kids in, coming to school in person and keep our buildings staffed. And I'll provide another update at the December 13th regular meeting and communicate a decision to families and staff at that time. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Henderson. Um, no questions on anything in uh, item seven. We're going to move on to uh, item number eight, which are the treasurer's recommendations. <clears throat> 8A, consider approving the October 2021 financial statements to include the monthly general fund rolling report, the monthly cash reconciliation, the monthly fund activity report, then and now purchase orders approved by administration, certified by the treasurer, and supported by board resolution totaling $155,000 seven hundred forty two dollars and ten cents could i have a motion please so moved. second miss sauber could you again explain uh to the public what then and now purchase orders are please yes uh, there are times when purchases are made prior to a purchase order being put in place um, those are uh, for things like emergencies, for example, um, and, and other times things just are purchased before that, that proper, proper authority is put into place. This is the audit compliance piece that we need to have that the board is aware that that has happened, um, and we're working uh, diligently to minimize those as best we can. Thank you. Any comments, questions? Did I, uh, could I have a motion for that, please? We are doing it. Thank you. Uh, Laura, call the roll. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Megan Stark? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Uh, item 8B, consider approving the minutes of the following Board of Education meetings. The October 25th, 2021 regular meeting, the November 15th, 2021 special meeting work session. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Megan Spark? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Item 8C, consider approving the general fund five-year forecast and assumptions for fiscal years 2022 through 2026 for submission to the Ohio Department of Education. 
So moved. Second. Um, Ms. Sauber explained uh, that uh, to everyone that every, is it every, every May and every November, um, school districts across Ohio are required to submit a, uh, a five-year forecast and assumptions, and, uh, and that's what they are. It's basically um, where, where we think we're going to be in five years, and it's pretty much uh, uh, our best guesstimate as to uh, where we might be. So call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Sternbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Mr. Schroeder? Yes. Uh, item number nine. Um, 9A, uh, the superintendent recommends accepting resignations as listed on Schedule A. The superintendent recommends the employment, change of employment status or change of contract status for the certificated personnel listed on Schedule B for the salaries, programs, and on the effective dates given. The superintendent also recommends the employment or change of employment status for the support staff personnel listed on Schedule C for the salaries, programs, and on the effective dates given. Uh, the superintendent also recommends the employment of the personnel listed on Schedules D and D1 for supplemental contracts or extra duty assignments. And the superintendent also recommends the granting of leaves of absence for the personnel listed on Schedule E for the reasons and on the dates given. Do I have a motion, please? Come in. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Sternbaugh? Yes. Dr. Moore? Yes. <clears throat> Megan Spark? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Um, continuing with uh, uh, item number 9A. Uh, the superintendent recommends the employment of the personnel listed on Schedule D2 for supplemental contracts or extra duty assignments. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dole? Yes. Mrs. Sternbaum? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Megan Sparks? Abstain. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Um, continuing uh, item number 9A, the superintendent recommends the employment of the personnel listed on Schedule D3 for supplemental contracts or extra duty assignments. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaum? Abstain. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Item number 10, consider approving the reappointment of Elizabeth Klein to the Washington Centerville Public Library Board of Trustees to another seven-year term that would begin January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2028. So moved. Second. Uh, Tom, I'm going to ask you to uh, comment on that, please. Absolutely, Mr. Schroyer. Um, the Washington Central Public Library is a separate, independently run entity from, so it's totally separate from Central City Schools. Um, but it, Washington Central Public Library is one of the 148 libraries in Ohio that was originally established as a school district library. This means that per the Ohio Revised Code, the public school district where the Washington Central Library resides must take certain actions because they cannot by law do that. So one of those is that means that the library's primary service um, mirrors the school district and that the Board of Education must appoint their proposed library trustees after they've been vetted and selected by the by the library board of trustees. So again, uh, Elizabeth Klein, uh, there was a job posting, uh, was vetted thoroughly, and Elizabeth Klein is a current trustee and has done a great job, and uh, uh, basically will be, has been nominated for a successive uh, seven-year term. So um, that's the action that we must take tonight to concur with the, the situation where they are right now with Elizabeth Klein. Thank you. Any other comments? Call the roll, please. She was, she was also the only person that interviewed for her. Right? That's correct. Great. For the posting. That's great. Call the roll. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dirkwell? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Item number 11. Consider a resolution approving the tax incentive agreement between the Centerville uh, City Schools Board of Education and the City of Centerville 
and the approval of the TIF exemptions, including compensation to Centerville City Schools. Now, we have discussed this uh, off and on and at length over the past two or three months. Uh, Laura, could you further comment on that, please? Tom? Sure, I, okay. can, I can. Um, actually, this conversation really started last summer, and by law, the city of Centerville could, could easily have done this on their own and, and created this TIF agreement um, and, and, and told us what to do. But we've had uh, ongoing uh, conversations with the city that have been very collaborative in nature. And uh, based on those conversations, um, we will, this school district will actually realize about $2.8 million over the next 30 years. And um, we feel that the, the development of the seven and a half acres on the corner of uh, Social Road and Yankee is a good thing. And uh, we're not getting any revenue at all and had the potential of not getting any revenue uh, by law. But uh, the city's been kind enough to work with us and recognize um, uh, the need that we have for revenue, and so they're going to provide that, and we think it's a, a great win-win deal for the school district. Thank you. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dole. Yes. Mrs. Durnbaugh. Yes. Dr. Rohr. Yes. Megan Sparks. Yes. Mr. Schroeder. Uh, yes. Uh, item number 12 on the agenda. A any other comments for the good of the order from anyone besides Allison? Yeah, I wanted to share some um, some of my notes from my first capital conference. Um, earlier this month, on November 7th through the 9th, I had the opportunity to go to Columbus for the Ohio School Board Association Capital Conference. Uh, the conference is held every year. However, in 2020, it was moved to a virtual conference. Uh, so this was my first opportunity to go in person. And I attended uh, several breakout sessions. I wanted to highlight a couple of them. Um, I'm not sure, I know several of us kind of went in and out, so I'm not sure what everybody was able to attend. Um, I know Megan was going to go to the legislative spotlight, um, and I wanted to outline, outline a couple things that I felt were pertinent to our school district. It was a lot of information coming very fast. Um, but uh, specifically, they highlighted uh, Senate Bill 1, which of course was just signing the law in October. Uh, that is the new law that requires a half credit of financial literacy as a graduation requirement, either as an elective or in lieu of a math credit. That will begin with next year's incoming freshmen. Um, also, House Bill 290, which is pending in the House Finance Committee. Um, and that is the bill that would establish backpack scholarship programs and create individual education savings account for for participating students to use for private schools, tutoring, or other allowable uses that could be quite costly um, in the budget if that progresses, so something to keep an eye on. And also I found House Bill 368 interesting. Um, that is pending in the House Primary and Secondary Education Committee. Um, and that bill would permit districts and schools to establish their own policies for weighted grade averages. Of course, it's completed through College Credit Plus, so I thought that would be potentially very beneficial to us. Um, I know we wanted to keep an eye on. Those are, are currently in their original uh, original chamber, so uh, a ways off, but nevertheless interesting. Um, I Several of the, the sessions I went to were reviews of my uh, board member 101 sessions that I attended back in January of 2020. Um, however, on Tuesday, there was a session called Developing a Vision and Living the Plan, which I thought fit nicely with our current strategic planning process. Um, I thought it was by far the best, the best session that I attended. It was a presentation given by the superintendent from Oak Hill School District, not Oak Hills. Uh, Oak Hill is very small on the eastern side of the state, um, and uh, she made a point to say that, trust me, nobody's heard of it. So. Uh, very small, obviously not, not comparable to our district, but still very interesting. Uh, she focused on how to integrate a new vision, mission, and goals into everything from basic communications to parents, to the community, to professional development within the buildings, and even her weekly communications with her board members. Um, I'd like a chance to go over my notes again and maybe follow up with Tom, Adam, and Sheree and um, to share that information as we're coming to the end of our strategic planning design team meetings. Um, I thought that fit really well in there. And then uh, one of the other ones that I thought was, uh, was very good was given by Patel for Kids, and it was called Are They Okay? Let's Ask Them. 
and it focused on uh, social emotional learning and the science of hope. And it seemed very similar and fit well with our current Pandora surveys that the district started back in the spring of last year. And then I know they've done another round here in October and probably another one planned for the spring. Uh, so I will uh, try to follow up with uh, Mrs. Colby on that as well. Uh, but overall, it was, a, it was a fabulous experience, and I was really excited to be able to attend in person. Always learn something at OSBA, don't we? And then the, the only other thing I wanted to say was uh, I wanted to shout out and uh, say good luck to our band at Macy's on Thursday morning, or in New York, at the Macy's Parade. Apparently, their on-screen time is estimated around 1130 now. 1130 now. <laughs> it's quite an estimate. So tune in at 1130, right? <laughs> Anybody else? I'd like to comment on one thing that uh, Allison commented on about the backpack bill. It's very important that everyone in our community takes note of this bill. It provides for vouchers for private schools and charter schools to five thousand seven hundred dollars I think something along those lines fifty five hundred for K through eight and seventy five hundred for nine through twelve that's what they're going to give Scott vouchers to go to private or charter schools our school receives eighteen hundred some dollars per child for every child in our school so they're going to take and give vouchers for private and charter schools three times as much as what we get for student here. That's going to continue to take money away from public education. I encourage everyone to get in touch with their senator, this is Roger Tani, and tell him to vote no because we want to stop levies, continuing levies for our school district. We can't let the state continue to fund private schools and private charter schools and take money, continue to take money away from public education. It's very, very important that this bill not go through if we want to protect free and appropriate public education. Thank you, John. Anybody else? Uh, before we go to executive session, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, being here tonight. Um, item number 13 on the agenda, uh, pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22 G2, could I have a motion that the board adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussing the potential sale of property? No other business will be conducted in executive session except to come out and adjourn. Got a motion? Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Peggy Sparks? Yes. Mr. Schroer? Yes. Thank you all for coming.